All right, this is our next episode of True Wrestling Fan Discussion, continuing our Clash of the Champion review series. This is going to be WCW Clash of the Champions 10. I'm your host, Mike. I'm Frank, man. Let's get to it. The Texas shootout in Corpus Christi, Texas on February 6, 1990. This is the buildup to uh, Wrestle War 90, which will take mm-hmm. place in a few weeks. Um, with Sting winning Starcade, he is the number one contender for the title. Also a member of the Horsemen. Yeah, recently, but not for long. No, very much not for long. As well as, um, damn, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, another match that signed is Lex Luger versus Dr. Destiny Williams at Russell War. So it's building up to be one hell of a pay per view. However, tonight would make a huge impact on Russell War as a result of what happened later on in the evening. Uh, this drew about a 4.5 on TBS, not a bad rating considering uh, what the main event was supposed to be as opposed to what it uh, became. Uh, some of the matches on there were lackluster. Others were very interesting, uh, good buildups, and a very good, very good mm-hmm. interview segment coming up. It opened up with Gordon Soley interviewing the Road Warriors as they're getting ready to take on the Skyscrapers later on in the evening. Uh, Dangerous Dan Spivey and Mean Mark Callis. Mean Mark Callis, yep. A.K.A. The Undertaker. The, Und- the Undertaker and Whaley Mercy. Yeah. So. Well, uh, I would <laughs> like to forget about <laughs> yeah, I'd be Whaley, too. Whaley Mercy because that was a bad character, but. Yeah. That was the 90s bad version of a Bray Wyatt. It was just really bad. Yeah. Really, really yeah. bad. Uh, opening match on the card was Dr. Dead Steve Williams versus the Samoan Savage yeah. with an interesting video promo of him. What the hell was that about? I don't know. The whole ambulance. An ambulance. And, he's trying to it, bring... That looked like Z-Man he put in the, in the, in the yeah, ambulance, yeah, yeah. by the way. And then he's trying to do CPR, yeah. which, by the way, you don't do CPR in the stomach. Just letting Dr. Death know. Well, he probably didn't want to like, accidentally, like you know, crack his uh oh, he killed his him. chest by doing that. So, I I don't understand that entire uh, little montage they did there, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, Big Kahuna managing the Samoa Savage. It didn't take too long before he got involved in this match, as well as Woman down at ringside mm-hmm. observing the match. Um, I thought this match was was okay. Again, I'm not a Doctor Death right. fan, but Another the fans one. were really behind him. Yeah, that was alright. He's the number one contender for the United States uh, Championship. Um, I was I was really impressed by his his brute strength on this on Samoa Savage being able to gorilla press slam him. Mm-hmm. The only thing I was disappointed at is that he didn't finish with the Oklahoma power slam that he normally does on and and this would have made the match complete. Instead, he uh, gets a backslide and a pin, and that's how he beats him. So it, it, for me, it kind of took away. He's showing all that for, that brute force strength but he didn't execute it in his finishing move. So that was the only downside to this match. Otherwise, it was very interesting, right. very back and forth between the two. Now, this was the best segment of the night in my book. The Following this match, Terry Funk is in the ring interviewing the four horsemen, Flair, Sting, Ole, and Arn Anderson. Arn, Ole couldn't wait to get the microphone mm-hmm. to tell Sting, hey, by the way, close your mouth. <laughs> I love Holy man. He's very, very to the, to the point. He don't sugarcoat mm-hmm. nothing. He told Sting he is no longer part of the Horsemen, and uh, that Flair gave him a reprieve. Um, he he it was uh, mainly because uh, he said saved him. He had helped Flair. Yeah, he helped Flair, which which spared him. But what signed his death warrant yeah. was the win at, at Starcade, signing mm-hmm. the contract to face Ric Flair at Russell War. So he wanted him to relinquish it. He wanted to, him to relinquish the title shot. Yep. And um, you know, pretty much Flair, uh, he said Flair called the both of them to get rid of Sting. Um, now, he, according to him, he said it was an unforgivable act. Um, like I said, and he signed his death warrant. Now, he had until he had two hours right. to get Ross or anybody it was right. to relinquish the title match, yeah. and they would spare his life. Right. And they're supposed to, because he's supposed to team up with them that, that same night. They're supposed, yeah, they're supposed, supposed to be in the to main be event. Arn Anderson, Sting, and Ric yeah. Flair against the, yeah. the Gary Hart so, International. I said no Gary Hart. Because yeah, so I, I, I don't remember I don't remember all of this, but I think the four horsemen were baby faces, sort of, for like two seconds yes. until they threw Sting to beaten. And then they then Yes. They, I think that's and what... then Gary Hart International with with like I said with no Gary Hart out there, they were the fan favorites for the evening. So it, it pretty much ruined the main event for the evening. Well, well, let's let's get into what happened. 
Flair and Flair and but but it was Flair. Flair is the one that I believe Flair is the one that initially Flair, attacked him. Yes, because he was talking he, to him at first, right? And then he just he sucker punched him. I think yeah, because happened. Sting told him, "Hell no, I'm no, not no, I'm not relinquishing." Anything. I wouldn't relinquish it. Uh, neither would I. No. You know, and that, they fought that already, right? Showing, oh, they fought at us at, at uh, Starcade. Yeah, they fought. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, they fought at, at Starcade. Yeah, it was that whole round robin, robin right, right, thing right, that they right, did right, yeah, with yeah. Muda, Sting, Luger, and Flair. Yeah. And Flair, Flair went over, right? No, I'm sorry, Sting. Sting, Sting went over on him, Sting went over. which got him the title shot. Right, right. And this, to me, is showing that Flair is intimidated by the young yeah. uh, superstar. It's funny, he's man. Telling him, get out of the business. It's funny. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. It's funny because we're doing. It, it was a good segment. I actually enjoyed the segment. It was, I, th- I, I thought did. it was. I thought it was really well done. It was. Um, like you said, kind of ruined the main event, but. There's a bigger picture here with what they're trying to do. They're trying to do the the Flair Sting feud um again, um but it's funny because we you know we were doing the Nitro series and, mm-hmm. and we just did like, we just <laughs> we went, just we just went through this five years later like with with Sting you know, like he just, Sting doesn't learn no he doesn't he'll never learn yeah. when it comes to Flair so they they, um, they took him out they took Sting out but yes, later yes on, they did we'll see, what, we'll see what happens and and an unfortunate event happens as a result of it but we'll get into that later. But this was the best, to me, the best segment of the whole, whole evening. Forget the matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was it. No, this no, was it. this was great stuff. This was great stuff. I, I'm just not sure if the timing was right doing it. I know what you're saying. I would have, I would have liked it to have gone on a little longer. Sting. Yeah, he was a member of Horseman for two months, I think, like an yeah. official, an official member. Yeah, and then Oli comes in, and and Arn comes back, and they just that's see, it. See, yo. Minnesota Wrecking Crew is wrecking you the hell out of here. So. so. On to our next match, which was a uh, whatever. Flying Brian Pillman and Z Man versus the Mod Squad, Spike and Basher, or Jim and Mark Je- Mac Jefferson, whatever you want to call them. Mod Squad, another tag team that was botched in, in the 1990s, didn't last a whole uh, long. This is now where the 89 plethora of tag teams is pretty much becoming nothing as they're all le- starting to leave. And Putting Pillman and Z-Man together, I thought was a pretty good uh, mixture. I just thought the team that they faced was a little eh. But, I mean, it was still action-packed from Pillman and Z-Man's point of view, not the other guys who looked like they had a few many, uh, too many Twinkies. Z-Man with a cross-body drop from the second turnbuckle is what got the pin on Basher and the victory for these two men. And they, uh, Cornette and Ross, who were doing the commentary, had announced, Cornette had announced that these two guys will be in the U.S. Tag Team Title Tournament but they need to get ready for the teams like the Midnight Express and the Fabulous Freebirds, who are also in the tournament. So that tournament is going to be a good one to watch. Following uh, that, we had a, another a first, uh, as far as the match goes. Mil Mascaris, the legend, versus Cactus Jack Manson, or Cactus Jack, yep. whatever you want to call him. The pretty much Cactus's debut here in, in, in WCW NWA. Bang, bang. This dude was a sick individual, but he did one thing after the match that I really enjoyed. Because remember, we were supposed to see a uh, musical number. Mm-hmm. Thank God, but, you know, Cactus decided to say, no, we're not going to get that. I'll get to that in a minute. This match itself was all right. I mean, Bill right. Masker is, is he, like I said, he's a legend, man of a thousand masks. At this time, his career is pretty much winding down. He's been wrestling 20, 30 years at this point. Cactus, a new face in WCW, unorthodox at that, too. Um, I thought the match w- was okay. Uh, legend versus rookie pretty much uh, in this. I love how Coronet sold Cactus hitting the concrete and the Mascaris threw him into it and how Cac- uh, how he said, oh, my God, he's got to be dead. He hit his head on the concrete. Jesus Didn't Christ. He? Yeah, this would be something that Cactus would introduce that, again, is unseen at this point here, which which it took fans a lot, you know, a little time to kind of get adjusted to him. And I'm sure the promoters were like, what the hell did we do here? What, what did we just sign? But the match itself, oh, no, let's not forget Cactus's little blunder, by the way. As he's on the outside going after Capetta for whatever reason, he moves a chair and then backs up and falls over it. Early Cactus okay. Jack. It's early Cactus Jack. It's it is. Him, the, like, like I said, this is Cactus Jack Manson, not yeah, just yeah. Cactus. So right. we'll, I'll give him some time. Uh, Mascaris, you know, flying crossbody on Cactus in the ring, got the pin. And like I said, after the match, Cactus Jack was stalking the uh, one of the band members. The drummer gets up in his face, and a whole melee ensues. And they're, they're going at it. This guy actually looked like a wrestler. He looked like he was about 6'3", 6'4". And so thank God we don't get no music video. 
No, no music performance this evening. Unless they got it off camera, that's their problem. So following that, Gordon Soley had the nice job of inter interviewing Norman. Oh, boy. This guy's still around. As upcoming is a Falls Count Anywhere match, Norman the Lunatic versus Kevin Sullivan. Of course, Norman asking Gordon Soley, oh, I can pin him by the hot dog vendor, and I, I can get a three count, and I can get three hot dogs. Thank you. Yeah, good good signing here. Uh, you know, good old Bastion Booger to come. He even did the Bastion Booger finishing move on the in, 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 on Sullivan too in the ring when he, when he drops down on him. For the most part, this match stayed in the ring, and I started questioning, it going, okay, if this is false count anywhere, why the hell are they still in the ring? And just as I say that, they go out to the entranceway, the, the back, the backstage area. You know, this is this is where this match hit the shitter, no pun intended. They take the match into the women's restroom. A woman comes running out screaming. All of a sudden, Sullivan comes out, falls down. Nick Patrick comes out with Norman. He goes, that's it. He won. Won what? We didn't see anything. Well, whatever. Norman gets the victory over Kevin Sullivan, allegedly. So that was a, a botched uh, match. If I, I, I think they should have went a little more hardcore and not in the women's restroom. So following that blunder, Terry Funk interviewed Lex Luger in the ring. Total package. I thought this was a good segment. He's talking about Sting to mm -hmm. start with. You know, he needs to know his place. I'm his friend, but and I'm no friend of Ric Flair. And then he starts, you know, gloating about himself. And this is the like, Lex. Oh, we we got to go to commercial. Yeah, this is the Lex that I love, man. This is like peak Lex. This is that cocky heel, like very, very arrogant. He's in This is what shape. WWF should have had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not narcissist. Well, he's got a narcissist guy, but, but not, this not Lex Luger is what we need. This Lex Luger, yeah. No doubt not, about that. Not, not the all-American Hulk Hogan version, right, too. Right, right, right. Yeah. It might have gone a little better, and especially a few with Bret Hart at that point would have been even more phenomenal with that Lex Luger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after Lex, you know, is you know being told that we got to cut the commercial, but keep on talking. We got to go. We got to go. I love that. Um, the next uh, match on the card was the Road Warriors versus the Skyscrapers mm -hmm. of Dangerous Dan Spivey and Mean Mark Callis. Sid Vicious is injured and. I, don't, I think at this point he's not even part of it anymore. But, yeah, probably not. Because when I mean, but it, when he comes back, he's just a singles guy, right? He, there's no, yeah. there's no reformation. I don't remember. I no, because the skyscrapers were pretty much done. Because yeah. um, even at Russell War, they had a masked the um, skyscraper because Spivey was injured. So at this point, it was just totally, you know, they shit the bed with the gimmick, and it's unfortunate because it was really good. No, oh, yeah. Now. This this match itself again. This now you can't have a, 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 an event called Texas Shootout without a Texas Death Match or something. I believe this is the match that that should, should have been because they were they were constantly going at it. It got totally chaotic towards the end. Yeah, we, we didn't even know that the referee got thrown out of the ring yeah, by Hall. I thought Hall it was good to throw those referees. Yeah. This is a good. This is a good. I, I thought it was fun. This is a fun, a fun match. It's not. That's not a technical match, but it, like it's just these no, strong, it's a brawling match, strong big fight. guys. And you know what's funny is that. Mark Calloway and the Road Warriors go, wind up in WWF later in the year. Several months right? from now, they're going to be there. Five feet down the road, but yeah, you know, it's interesting. Yep. A lot of these guys that you mm -hmm. look on the card are like, oh, they, you know, they're coming yeah. soon. They're coming but this, soon. Is a star, this is a star studded card, though. It is. Hall of Famers. A lot of Hall of Famers in this. Oh, definitely. And I mean, this match didn't disappoint. I love they got the Doomsday device on Spivey, Undertaker. I'm sorry. Mean Mark says, uh uh. Teddy Long hands him a chair. He goes down on him. By this point, unless you look at, unless you listen to Cornette say that Hawk threw the referee out, you don't even know where the referee is. They're beating the hell out of them with chairs. Paul Ellering's kicking Teddy's ass. Mm -hmm. They clothesline Paul Ellering. It's total chaos in the ring. And then we go to find out that the Road Warriors won by disqualification, wow. even though Hawk was the first one to throw the ref out. I don't know. I, I thought this should have been a Chicago street fight, Texas death match, whatever you want to call it. They should have let these, these teams beat the holy hell out of each other. Because this feud is not the, not done, not by a long shot. Sounds like a Steve Austin line there. Actually, it was. Our next match on the card was another good one. It was for the World Tag Team titles, titles versus mass. As if, as if, as if you didn't know who they were already. 
by listening to them talk. It was the Steiner brothers versus Doom. Mm-hmm. Spoiler before I get to the Ron Simmons and Butch Reed. Come on, yeah, yeah. It, you're not fooling anybody, guys. I did love how Jim Ross was all surprised. That's that's natural Butch Reed. Yeah, that's the natural Butch that's, Reed. That's Ron Simmons. Yeah. yeah, okay, guys. It's only if a, a full mask would have would have helped. Yeah, but it, when you got the opening and you're hearing them talk, I know, I know, you know yeah. who they are. And in the end, it was it was just pointless. The masks were pointless to begin with. Like there's no they reason. They really were. They they didn't need it. Didn't they it. they didn't need to hide themselves. No, no. Just put them together. They it's were really a good either. dominant tag team yeah. for a good year and a yeah. half. I mean, come on, whatever. I yeah. mean, they, they got to put their little niche on it. That's all. But this match, this rivalry didn't disappoint as well. No, this is one of this is one of the good ones. Um. Thankfully, the Steiner brothers got the upper hand on this night. However, soon to come, they won't, as Doom will beat them for the tag championships. Um, It was funny how they did it. Uh, During the match, Rick Steiner kind of pulled the mask off Reed before the match was even over. It was kind of cheesy how it won, how they won, but I get it to build up the story. He, 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 He kind of pushes Butch Reed into Ron Simmons and then rolls him up for the pin. So the Steiner brothers keep the tag team titles and... One member of Doom is now unmasked, so now Simmons has to do it, or they're both going to be suspended from wrestling. And they're over here crying like we don't already know. Hell, I think I even heard a Simmons chant from the, from the crowd. And when he pulls it off, that's when they sold. He goes, that's Ron Simmons. So now we know who Doom is, if you didn't know already. And like I said, there's uh, plenty more matches between these two uh, tag teams to come. Now, after this, they showed earlier in the night what the Horsemen did to Sting. I felt bad for Sting, but I still love the segment. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Gordon Soley was interviewing the Horseman. Now, did you notice Flair said a, a familiar line? Whether you like it or not. It's the best thing going today. Yeah. Well, now we know the end. And I didn't know this. I'm going to be I didn't, honest. I didn't know it either. I, I did that. The NWO no. took this took that, from yeah. the Horseman. I had no idea. I mean, I, I thought know. I know. I thought I knew a lot of things, but no, I, I really yeah. did not know that. Yeah, so. yeah. It's good. Right? Yes, because as soon as he said it, I went, say what? And I heard the Giants voice in the background. Exactly. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> I did too. It's the best thing yeah, going, going today. today. Yeah, because yeah. I had to actually go back. I'm like, wait, he just didn't say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Great promo, though. It was a great promo. Yes, it really was. And now here's the other interesting thing. As we get to the main event, it's supposed it was supposed to be Flair, Sting, mm-hmm. and Arn Anderson. Yeah. Only replaced this thing. Okay. Against Gary Hart International of Muda. Buzz Sawyer, who doesn't belong in there, and Dragon Master. Now, during the Horseman promo before they came out, Flair said Muda, Sting, and Dragon Master, which means to tell me that they kind of messed up because now I'm assuming Sting was supposed to be part of their team when he mentioned the three of them, but he didn't mention Sawyer. He said, uh, "Y'all, um, uh, Muda, Sting, and Dragon Master, you're going to face the nightmare of your wrestling career in that cage. So, I don't know. Maybe they thought last minute, don't put Sting in the match. Just leave it the way it is. I thought it might have been a little bit more. Possibly. He might have just messed up. I don't know. Putting Sting in there, I don't think would have hurt anything. You know, if they're coming to the ring and Sting takes out Sawyer, tells Muda, I'm with you tonight or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. They could have. With doing the promo early in the night, it kind of messed up this match in the cage. Cage match. Um, Because now it's heel versus heel, and the fans yeah. are having to cheer for Muda. Right, right, right. And them, and that's yeah. why I said there's no Gary Hart at ringside. Uh huh. Yeah, no, I agree. The whole match, the fans are chanting, "We want Sting." We want Sting. This is another case of Muda being belittled, like he was at Stark. Overshadowed, yeah, overshadowed. Yeah, he he wasn't be he wasn't his dominant force. Where the match gets real interesting now is when Sting comes running out, charging to the cage. Security. Security. Tr- trying to get the Flair. Flair's jumping over. So now you know Sting has made his choice. All right. Pillman and Z-Man trying to hold him back. They they, they get him back for a time, but he comes back I don't know why. Again. I don't know why Pillman and Z-Man will try to hold him back. Pillman loved to be in the Sting segments. You notice? Yeah, he's the always getting involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. But I, me, I would have let him in there. To give him a baseball bat, a friggin' mm-hmm. two by four, or something. He's going in there against so three like, guys. Let him do it. They're trying to hold him down the aisle. The match, the match continues to go on, which nobody's watching, unfortunately, because right, right. they're all the watching Sting. Because watch. yeah. now, because of that segment, they put the focus on Flair and Sting, and here comes Flair again. This time, the Steiner brothers 
try to hold him back. Mm-hmm. But the second time he came off the cage, he blew out his knee. Yeah, that they messed up big time on that because now as they're trying to hold him back, he's hopping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you and I and I could hear and I could see the, his mouth over to I believe it was Scott. My knee is gone. Yeah, he got injured. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so now at Wrestle War, he will be replaced by Lex Luger mm-hmm. in that match. Thing will be a ringside with him. This is the only unfortunate part with doing this is now uh, we have to pretty that, much. Though. I know it's it's, it's, it's unfortunate. Un- it's un- How about um. So the, the, these guys go over, right? The the horsemen go over. Arn Anderson, uh, DDT, right. Dragon Master, and got the yeah. pin. As if anybody right. can. And then, at this point. and then Flair took off like a bat out of hell. Oh after, yeah, he after, ran after, right Did you see that, that jump? Did you see when he, <laughs> he launched himself? He went flying over these guys. I yep. thought he was gonna break his neck the way he, the way he jumped. Yes. Speaking of that, I thought um, Arn Anderson and I th- actually it was Oli. I thought he broke uh, Bud Sawyer's neck when he yeah. flipped him. He, he hits the rope and lands on his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They look bad, right? Yeah, yeah but that got thankfully he got up and, and started going thing, back at Oli. But that's the thing that's cool about this and the horsemen and stuff like that. It's like they, he Flair's not like a typical heel that runs like a coward. Like he went right into the fire. He don't he care. Wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he'll, he'll, he'll fight the fight. Right, 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 right. So it was good. It was good. And even though Sting was hurt, they you know they he still went it's on with fighting, the segment. Yeah. yeah. And so now this huge buildup is going to have to wait until I believe it was the yeah. Great American Bash. Yeah. Well, that's the famous match. That yeah, that's the yeah. that's the famous match. And, and you know, honestly, to me, I think the bash was a better setup for this match than just Russell War. Yeah, because I, I mean, a match of this magnitude, right, right, right. Yeah, you, you should, need to be. be it needs to be on a big stage, bigger stage. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, it's for it's unfortunate for what happened to Sting, but fortunate for the business that, yeah. that you, you know you can postpone yeah, forget, this um, till, till their summer spectacular. I I forget like what the uh, what the lead up is to that you know during the because it, this it's it's a few months away because what are we in? This is February, right? This it's February, February, yeah. Yeah, so when is that? That's in the uh, uh, June, June or July. June around there, somewhere in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but it was, it's just the start of an, another great, another great feud. And I enjoyed the card. It was, it was, it was fun. It was, it was a fun night. It was. It was That's yeah. that segment just mm-hmm. lit it up. You wanted to wait for the main event, yeah. and then you get to the main event, and all the fans yeah. want is Sting. Yeah. It's like hey, we don't care about these three mm-hmm. idiots fighting the horsemen. We want him. Sting, man. Sting. Sting. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. All right, that's our review. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.